I'm going to move on to um, some questions in regards to the discussion that's been ongoing for the, maybe the last year. Uh, on a couple of the most uh, popular Christian blogs in Sweden, there's been a sort of a clash between the Hebrew Roots movement and uh, uh, that wants to rediscover all the books of the Bible, including the five books of uh, Moses, or what you call it, Torah, uh, and another group that's um, uh, sort of rediscovering uh, the grace message from Martin Luther. Um, and um, uh, as you can understand, there might be a, a clash there. And there has been a clash. Um, uh, some some critics of the grace movement, as they call themselves, uh, or have been called, uh, uh, have labeled them uh, the crazy grace movement, as the critics are, are um, have a fear that an overemphasis on grace will um, lead to taking sinning too, sinning too lightly. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with this. I, I have a lot of friends in the movement, and I think they're good people. But uh, one of its uh, most prominent leaders in Norway, he likes to quote Dr. Johnny Scholl, pretty famous all over the world, that supposedly said that, made the following statement, it's high time to move the pulpit from Mount Sinai to Calvary, meaning that the Old Testament mainly, uh, uh, and what the Torah represents is a harsh, graceless, and legalistic message, and we need to move the pulpit up to Calvary. Uh, what do you think of when you hear me quote Dr. Yanni show. I can imagine, but I want to hear what you say. Yeah, well, I, you know, I believe he who throws mud loses ground. And so I'm not here to bash anybody, but as far as the, the comment doesn't make sense at all. Uh, if you remember, it says, uh, what did Noah find? Noah found what? Grace. Grace. Oh, oh my goodness, there's grace in the Torah. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. If you remember when God put Moses in the cleft of the rock and he proclaimed his name as gracious, full of loving kindness, abounding in mercy. Uh, the problem is, grace is all through the Torah. It, it's not like, here's this, if, is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Okay, it's, it's, it's the early Gnostic churches uh, in the, you know, the first century that were thinking, ooh, there's this one mean God, and now we're gonna turn from the mean God to this one good yes. God, and there's two different gods. So it's, really misunder it's, it's a misunderstanding, misunderstanding that grace was invented in the New Testament. Grace wasn't invented in the New Testament. Grace is all through the Torah. It's all through the Torah. As a matter of fact, several places that talk about circumcision of the heart yes. in the Torah. Yes. So grace is, uh, you can have law, you have to have law and grace. Mm -hmm. There are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Look at with your kids. If you let your kids run rampant, what do you have? A mess. And if you're a total legalist with your kids, what do you have? A mess. So he's we're, never we're going to continue that thread, law and grace, because uh, um, also if there's a lot, a big group of people in Scandinavia that feel that all they really need is the love commandments of, uh, of Luke 10 and 27. Oh, good. Um, and uh, they feel like this is all we need, and that combined with Jesus in our hearts, and right. it's, we have sort of a spiritual GPS, sure. and why would we need the, the law? Okay, because the Torah tells you how to love your neighbor with all your heart. Hmm. Do we want to love someone? Uh, what about a stalker? You have a, have you ever been stalked by some crazy person? Well, they love you. Yeah. Hello, I don't want that kind of love. The way, how do you, the Torah tell, defines love. How do you love God with all your heart? How do you love your neighbor? Mm -hmm. This is how you love your neighbor. Hey, don't cut the corners of your field, save it for the widow, the orphan, mm -hmm. the stranger. All of that is in the Torah. Yes. You know, it tells you how to love. Because if we do that which is right in our own eyes, I mean, some people that, some people are real sicko wackos that say they love somebody. Mm -hmm. How many of you have been loved, you know, or someone who loves you that's a, a little weirdo? So uh, there's a lot of people that say they love God, and, and it says in the New Testament, you just says, I don't know, you get away from me. Yeah. So uh, the Torah defines love. Yeah. It really, it's not just an emotion, it, it's going to be by your actions. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is a complex uh, subject because um, in, uh, I find particularly in, in Sweden, maybe because of a lot of legalism in some denominations, but uh, the, our relationship to the law, is, sometimes it's a little black and white. Uh, a long and effective discussion has therefore preoccupied many. The classical question whether or not we are under the law, and what sure. part of the law are we under, and I realize that answering this is a three-day Bible study, but, but um, the question would be, um, uh, uh, if, if you're a born-again believer of Yeshua Messiah, uh, are you under the law or not? Uh, and what is your relationship to the 630 laws of Moses? Okay, good. Boy, I have so many thoughts coming through my mind. That was a huge question. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, I'm but, uh, that no, that's fine. Uh, uh, well, let me think how I want to say this. Okay, 
First, you may have to repeat that because you said different things that trigger different thoughts. But let me just take part of it right now. Uh, the, here's one of the commandments. Here's one of the laws. Mm -hmm. You should pay your employees on time. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how would you like your boss to come up to you and say, I don't have to pay you today. I'm not under the law. Yeah. That's pretty stupid, isn't it? Uh, one of the other laws in the 613 commandments is a judge shouldn't take bribes. Mm -hmm. Gee, I think that's a keeper. Yes. Okay. That's okay, that's a good one. Uh, don't have sex with animals. Yeah. Hey, that's I think that's a good one too. I'm not under the law, but I have sex with an animal. Yeah. See, people are clueless. Yeah. They don't understand what they're saying about being under the law. Mm -hmm. Now think of it this way. Is God king? Most people would say yes. Oh, he, I love him as a king. He has no laws. Oh, great. Here's a king. I can do whatever I want to do. I'll pull this king out of my pocket, pull him out. Hey, mm -hmm. do we want to treat God like a Kleenex? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll pull you out when I need you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love Kleenexes. Mm -hmm. And I love you too, God. I'll pull you out when I need you. Just don't give me no laws. No. And so the, the birth, here's the main thing about legalism that people don't understand. Legalism says you're saved by keeping the law. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. We're not saved by keeping the law. The, we're saved by grace through faith. The law was to teach us how to live when we're saved by grace through faith. Hey, be nice to your neighbor, okay? Pay your employees on time. So there, there's just a huge misunderstanding of the whole concept. And I really recommend people going to our website, listening to the highest so teachings. Okay. I go through the highest so teachings. I cover all of this. It's 14. I'm sorry, the highest? Highest so. It means the foundation. Okay. Okay. On our website, under here messages, yes. it's H-A-Y-E-S-O-D. They click on that. There's 14 hours of teaching where they can hear me lay the foundation of law and grace and how the Apostle Paul was misunderstood. So that's a real good place for people to go. Um, a lot of people like to read, uh, of course, out of Galatians. So we're talking sure. about the law. And uh, Galatians 3 and uh, 22 on 4, uh, it says the following, or 23 to, through 25. But therefore faith come, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. A lot of people seem to get stuck in this passage. Right? Yeah, they, they totally misunderstand. We don't need this tutor anymore because we have Jesus in our hearts, right? Sure. So can't he guide us kind of like a spiritual GPS? Okay, well here's how that's supposed to be explained. First off, let's say a king has a, a son and he wants him to train to be a king, mm -hmm. right? And so what does he do? He hires a tutor to train his son about all the laws of the kingdom and how to be a good king. Mm -hmm. And then when the son has all those laws in his nature and in his heart, he doesn't need the tutor anymore. Mm -hmm. But does that mean he goes and kills the tutor? No. He doesn't, I don't need you anymore. Yeah. Okay, but the reason he doesn't need the tutor is because now all the laws are in his heart. Okay, so they're, they it's, just kind of move They totally misunderstand it. Yeah, what God is saying is the tutor, the law, is to train you how to be a son of the living God. Mm -hmm. a, these are the things that my children do and what they don't do. Mm -hmm. And now once you have it in your heart, you don't need the tutor because now it's part of your second nature. Yes. And once again, I mean, really to answer these questions, it's a, it's a three-day seminar at least, right? So, um, uh, <laughs> and I'll be glad to come to Sweden and do a three-day seminar. Yes, let's do that. Out there. Let's do that this spring. Uh, if you're